Hello, this is K. Kandasamy, Department of Chemistry, K. Sir College of Arts and Science for Women. So, uh, today we uh, talk about the nanotechnology, what is the nanotechnology and the basic introduction about the nanotechnology. So, we know very well, so nowadays and recently the nanotechnology is a very important area in the, all the sciences as well as the, um, all the entire material science areas. So we should know what is the basic parameters or basic uh, principles of the or follow the nanotechnology. So first of all we go for the what is nanotechnology. So that means the nanotechnology is the implication of the matter at the nanometer scale to create novel structure and devices and systems. So that is a basic principle in the nanotechnology. So any material to convert it into the, in the nano scale. So to study about the nano scale, we talk about we call that is the nanotechnology or nanoscience. So it is uh, it has uh, uh, marvelous areas covered in the novel materials like uh, zero dimensional, one dimensional, two dimensional nano materials, uh, like uh, as well as the device like the sensor devices. So nowadays we have a lot of uh, sensor devices, gas sensor and uh, um, biological sensors. So likewise we have lot of nano, nano materials available in our uh, scientific areas as well as the, the systems especially NEMS so non, uh, nanotechnology electromagnetic uh, systems so that is a, a major another one areas so that is nanotechnology and nanotechnology is the one of the multidisciplinary areas it's combined the all the science as well as the engineering uh, fields so especially the physics material science chemistry biology as well as the medicine, uh, as well as the engineering. It covers most of the all the scientific as well as the engineering areas. So, it has a lot of applications like uh, um, cosmetic, uh, cosmetics, textiles, health and the medicines, as well as the energy improvement, mechanical energy and robotics and nanoelectronics as well as the surface coating. So, it's a plenty of uh, applications are available in the nanomaterials as well as the nanotechnology. So, so from this we can understand easily this important one. So nowadays it is a very very important one. And we go for the what is nanometers or nanomaterials. What is nanomaterials? So it is a study about the materials less than 100 nanometers. Uh, it is called as the nanomaterials. So especially in the size of particle size. It is a study in the it's a less than nanometer, 100 nanometer. We call that is a nano scale. And the 1 nanometer, we know very well that is a 1 nanometer that is equal to 10 power minus 9 meters. So, especially for example, our human hair, it is around it is a 1 lakh nanometer size. So, we can imagine that how this nanometer is a very very small. So, compared to the, our human hair, human hair is a almost 1, um, 1 lakh nanometers. So, uh, but uh, we have a lot of quantum dot materials like 0 dimensional, 1 dimensional, 2 dimensional, as well as 3 dimensional materials. So these all are covered under 100 nanometers only. So uh, that is a uh, uh, nanometers. So we have a lot of classifications like uh, uh, nanomaterials. So we have 0 dimensional nanomaterial, 1 dimensional nanomaterial, as well as the 3 dimensional nanomaterials. So what is a 0 dimensional? So 0 dimensional nothing but so we call that is a length as well as uh, width as well as the height. So this all the cover the three dimensions. So X, Y, Z. We call that is a three dimensional um, uh, spectrum. So especially the length as well as the height as well as the width. So in the zero dimensional, the all the three areas are confined to the nanoscale at the single point. So, so all the uh, uh, dimensional will be confined to call the zero dimensional. So there is no dimension there, but we call that is a zero dimensional. So that is a zero dimensional. For example, quantum dot materials, nanoparticles, as well as the fullerene material. So these all are for example for the zero dimensional materials. So and go for the one dimensional materials. One dimensional material is nothing but the both height as well as the width will be confined to form the one dimensional nanomaterials. That means only the length of the particle will be in this sense. Like we produce a lot of nano rods, nano tubes, as likewise uh, nano wires. So these are being called as the one dimensional nanomaterial. This is a very famous example for the nano fibers, nano uh, rods, as well as the nano wires. So these are the one dimensional nanomaterials. 
So what happened here only the width as well as the length will be confined. So next we go for the uh, two dimensional nanomaterials. So here the height only confined. So height only confined the, the remaining length as well as the width will be uh, play as a major role here. So only the height will be confined it is called to nanosquare section. It is called as the uh, two dimensional nanomaterials. So for example nano sheets as well as the nano coatings. So these are the two dimensional nanomaterials and three dimensional. So we have three dimensional uh, length as well as the width as well as the um, uh, height. So there is no confine in the all the areas. So these are called the three dimensional materials like in our graphite as well as the TeO2 uh, powders. So these are the three dimensional nanomaterials like nano powder nanomaterials. So these are the, the types of what are the type of uh, what are the classifications are in the nanomaterials. So we are saw for the zero dimensional, one dimensional, two dimensional as well as three dimensional. There are four uh, classifications are in the nanomaterials. So next we go for the unique properties of the nanomaterials. So the property is very very important one. So this is a bulk material. So we are converting to bulk material into small scale like quantum dot, nano dot, nano waves. So because of this macro size into nano size, the property will be increases compared to the other bulk material because the surface area will be reduces, the physical property will be increases as well as the other temperature, all the physical as well as the chemical property will be converted into um, other scale. So is a bulk material compared to the bulk material, the nano material is a very effective one. So that's why the field is developed nowadays they uh, improve day by day. It's a very achieved, uh, very lot of uh, innovation as well as the invention. So is a chemical. Um, uh, first of all, the surface area. So when we go for the increase in the surface area, we uh, reduce the size of the particles. Surface area will be increases when the uh, particle size will be decreases. And next one the melting point. So when decrease mean that the next slide we go for the band gap of nanomaterials. So the band gap when the size will be increases the particle size will be increases. Band gap when it will be increases. So see here at the uh, very lower size of the particle size the band gap will is increases. So it's another uh, parameter in the you know. and yes we go for the mechanical properties. So like the ductility, skin and the toughness, hardness, so corrosion restrictions. So these all the properties increases with the reducing in the size. So size will be reduces means this all property will be increases. And compared to the only whereas the density and electrostatic modeling uh, decreases with the reduction of the size. The size reduces means this property will be decreases. So there is a major impact in the uh, mechanical properties. And we, next we go for the synthesis of the nanomaterials. So we have a lot of uh, synthesis methods. So especially we want to find out the or we want to synthesis the zero dimensional, one dimensional or three dimensional, whatever we want. We want to choose the method of synthesis. So that is we have three different uh, methodologies. So first of, first of all we go for the I want to synthesis quantum dot or nanoparticles. This, that means zero dimensional we want means go for the hot sensing method as well as the dilution precipitation method and combustion method, Georgian method, biological method. So these are the main synthesis, main uh, method. So this is, so this is the quantum dot material as well as the some nanoparticle materials. That is a one dimensional materials. And next we go for the I want to synthesis the nano wire. That means uh, one dimensional. So we go for the definitely we go for the hydrothermal, solvo thermal, uh, temperature resistance and electrostatic. So these are the very important method. So this is the one dimensional nano wires or nano dots. And we want to see this the uh, nano sheets, like sheet laser, that means uh, two dimensional structure means. We go for the solar chemical, microwave, electrochemical, solar thermal. So these are the methods to so see the two dimensional nano materials. So these are types of the synthesis of our nano materials. And so especially the biosynthesis, it's a very important role one. So because it is a very very lowest class as well as the, uh, there is no hazard compared to the other chemical as well as the hydrothermal uh, methods. So it's a very famous one by using the selected microorganism, using such as the bacteria, fungal, yeasts, enzyme, as well as the some other plant extracts. So these are the main role in the, so to synthesize the biomaterials, so bio nanoparticles. 
So, what are the advantages are in the biosynthesis? First of all, green synthesis. So, one of the green synthesis and it uh, is so very eco friendly materials and very low cost, only single process and can be used for the large scale synthesis uh, uh, without uh, up to uh, uh, 50 gram or 20 gram, 30 gram, 100 gram, we can synthesize through the uh, biosynthesis material. So, no need to use high pressure, temperature, or any toxic chemicals. So, it is only the bio extract like plant extract or microorganism. So, like the yeast or any enzymes or bacteria, this is an essential need for to synthesize the nano material. So, that is a basic, uh, it is a act as a some stabilizing, capping, as well as the some um, important role in the our biosynthesis material. And so, uh, there is a not required any special culture or preparation and isolation techniques. So, uh, only this need for the any extract or biological uh, you know, material like uh, is of fungal bacteria and it's a more than enough to synthesize the nanoparticle. So compared to the other techniques, the biosynthesis is a very important role in the our nanoparticle material. So next one. So synthesis methodology of the nano through the plant extract. So what what why we are choosing the biosynthesis, especially plant synthesis is a very important role in the um, so green synthesis in, uh, in the nanotechnology. So because it's contain lot of uh, organic compounds like terpenoids, alkaloids, carbohydrates. So um, lot of um, carotenoids, so terpenoids. So these are the major role to control the size of the nanoparticles. So uh, bulk material to up to quantum dot we can prepare through the these uh, uh, capping agents. So the all the uh, organic compound all the phytochemical compounds used as the capping as well as the stabilizing element. So, it is a major role in the our uh, nanoparticle context. So, another very important one to, to maintain the pH as well as the concentration, reaction time, reaction temperature. So, to get the very good uh, nano powders or nanoparticles. So, next we move on the characterization techniques. So, uh, we are using this some nanoparticle. So, how to confirm or how to determine the our uh, nano uh, particles. So, we want to confirm through our first of all the XRD. XRD is a phase analysis as well as the crystalline morphology. So, that is a major role to define the what are the uh, morphology present in the our nano particles. So, through we can confirm through XRD as F area. So, that is a, a structural confirmation. So, especially the function group, what are the function group, whether carbohydrate present or carbohydrate agent present or aldehyde present. So, this is a term, um, all the uh, function group confirmed through the FTA as well as Next one, UV visible. This is also sexual confirmation. And XR, XRF is a quantitative as well as the qualitative elemental analysis. So, and TEM. So, this is a very specific as well as the very, um, uh, very famous instrument to determine the particle size as well as the micro uh, around a section and micro sections as well as the DLS. So, this is a qualitative. Call the average particle size determination. So, this is a very basic introduction of the our nanotechnology. So, entirely we, uh, the nanotechnology is a very important role in the, all the area. So, first we want to know what are the basic uh, essential characters in the our nanoparticles, our nanomaterials. 